doesn't have his camera on. But in reality, our relationship to Ukraine began in his kitchen. Mm -hmm. so, so that that so Jack, welcome. And there's another reason why I'm trying to introduce you, Jack, is Jack. Some of this stuff is coming from police departments, and Jack has a. a I don't want to scratch. Jack, do you want to explain your relationship to the police departments in the state of Massachusetts? I think you're muted, you're muted. Jack. Those, those are the most famous words that I ever say. All right. Anyways, thank you, Roy. Uh, my job for over 40 years was general counsel to the Police Chiefs Association of the state. I'm uh, not doing that anymore. I do a lot of stuff on the international level now. And I'm still counsel for the Fire Chiefs Association. So I just, in the last couple of minutes, sent a, uh, an email to both associations asking them to reach out to all their members, all the chiefs of police and all the fire chiefs, to see if they couldn't uh, figure out a way to get some uh, excess uh, surplus equipment. And I told them we were doing it through the Rotary Club and that you had the logistical arm to get it done. So we'll see what kind of response you get. You know that there are rules in Massachusetts in terms of getting rid of surplus equipment. And ordinarily, there's a whole long procedure. It has to go through a, a lot of... Uh, uh, disposal uh, procedures and it may very well be that they can uh, bypass some of that and not get themselves in trouble but uh, at least we get the ball going and, and I, i'm sure i'll get some response so i'll coordinate that back through roy or whoever i'm supposed to do and, and and see what we can do to help you out that's wonderful that's wonderful thank you so yes and i think you know the first step is reaching out to the fire departments the police departments i do know that uh some of the equipment um you know, let's just call it lightly used equipment that is not at its expiration date yet that can be donated. I do know that some of them do have a surplus that are, are they are able to donate some of it. Um, I think a follow up uh, with uh, some of the fire departments that show interest. I don't have a problem, you know, giving a call to any fire department and saying, hey, um, this is what we're trying to do. Can you help? What's the worst that can happen? They can tell me no, right? Um, so, and then I. Uh, gotcha, John had a John has a comment. Uh, yes. like Jack was saying, uh, it can be an arduous process. My many years as being a selectman, uh, you have to remember all that equipment is bought with taxpayer dollars. So, as much as the is the fire department or the police department wants to get rid of that, there is a process to do it and it can be a slow and arduous process also. A lot of times the board of selectmen will have to vote to donate that equipment. And unfortunately it could take two weeks to get on an agenda to do it. So to your point, we got to start tomorrow morning. We've got to really put a sense of urgency. And when we're asking for the donation, make sure that we also ask during the process to the chief or or the communications person that you speak to, what is that process going to be? Because we don't want to slow everything down, you know. And if, and if it's going to take two weeks for a board of selectmen or a city council to vote on it, that's great. But Katiana's got to know that, you know, for shipping purposes and stuff like that. So, John, I like you already. <laughs> you got me. Yeah, we got to start tomorrow morning. Yep. <laughs> uh, Richard, I think you're muted, Rich. Sorry about that. Um, my wife wants me muted all the time. So yeah. <laughs> uh, that said, uh, what we could really use, which I think uh, John and Jack are talking about, is that we really need to have some sort of a process sheet that we can use to put in front of every one of those fire managers, the fire, fire chiefs, and so forth. Um, we actually have some pretty detailed lists and email lists um, to fire chiefs and emergency managers, not just here in Massachusetts, but across the country. So maybe we do a one-time email blast. The question is, how are we going to, what's the logistics in terms of collecting this? Are we going to, I'm just sort of working through the process because you're going to get started tomorrow morning at like seven o'clock in the morning. Um, are we going to pick this stuff up? Are we going to have drop points? Are we going to have, uh, say, five or six drop points across Massachusetts? Just things to think about and uh, possibly have rotary clubs that have, uh, have uh, you know, firm addresses. They could drop the stuff off. Um, so I'm just trying to think through the process and see what we can do to accelerate this. But right. yeah, we need to have that process sheet in place so that, that fire chief does not have to guess about what he needs to do in terms of getting that stuff donated. Right. Right. So in terms of the processes, uh, so there is there's two options. 
Uh, one is a centralized location for a warehouse where we can then have a truck come pick up the uh, equipment and bring it basically to the airplane. Um, and the other option is, of course, having, as you said, five or six different locations. And this can be, you know, a, a Rotarian's garage where we can now fire equipment is bulky and big. So just, you know, right away that you guys understand these are going to be some pretty big boxes, um, you know, and, and it will take up space. So depending on where we're able to, if anyone has a contact for a warehouse, I do not have a contact for a warehouse where we could get space uh, donated would be very nice um, in order for us to store this for, let's say, up to a month, right, as, as we're starting to get everything rolled in. Uh, the deadline I would like for this to be would be within the next month, month and a half to get the shipment ready and ready to go. Right. Again, there are there are processes that you have to follow with the Board of Selectmen. There are processes that you have to follow uh, before even going in front of the Board of Selectmen. Sometimes it all depends on the town policies as well. So it may take us longer in some areas. So we need, you know, volunteers to uh, to call volunteers to pick up volunteers to drop off. And if anyone has a warehouse or we can have multiple locations. So if you're willing to use your location, your garage to store, that would be great. We can then have one truck come, come through and pick up for, at all of the locations. Sue, I'm so sorry. I did not ignore you. I was just trying to answer Rich's question. You're actually he asked part of my question and I realized I had more so and you mentioned that like these are big things and big boxes um will will there be packaged will these items whatever they are be packaged or so like, we cannot how do you we cannot ask the uh the the fire department to always pack to also package it right so right. we will have to uh package it up in such a way that it can be easily shipped um, we will need to put Rotarian uh, labels on it so that way, you know, with addresses, with everything else and make it nice and pretty. Um, and so with multiple phone numbers so that not a single box gets lost. I've learned that one with the medical shipment. I have more phone numbers on there and names and everything else. So that way, if, if that box goes sideways and someone takes a picture, I will find that box. Just saying. So <laughs> um, you do have to be careful with it, of course, but yes, uh, we would have to repackage everything. And that can be, you know, that would be a wonderful district-wide, you know, event, right? I mean, people come out, they help out. We had a wonderful time. Roy, you, you know, you had a blast taking care of all that medicine. Um, and my husband was there and everything, and Dr. Resnick was there as well. So it is a good time. We have fun with it. Uh, I hope that answered a portion, at least, of your question. Yep, Brenda. Good. Thanks. Uh, I have a suggestion for um, getting people to call. So we have how many districts um, in the state. I would go to the district um, governor of each of those districts and I put a phone tree out and every club with it, you know, and just map here, you're calling these, you're calling these, you're calling these, and everybody's, that way you're sharing the wealth, you only have to make five phone calls, you know, something like that. So that's something I can, I can help you do. Um, I'm sure um, we have lists of names and phone numbers and email addresses that are easily dispersed. And um, that way we share the wealth and nobody has to sit and make phone calls all day. And Brenda, that's why you're our incoming president. Just Look, let, me, let, me, let me clarify a couple of things. First of all, let's talk about the items. Okay, we received multiple lists. And what, one of the things we had to do, we have to do is we have to narrow that list of what they want down to what's feasibly sourced by a local local fire department or local police department they have you know they've got all kinds of things on that on that list so the first thing is to determine which of those things are actually achievable from those departments second we i'm just hearing both john and, and jack they're, they're clearly saying there's a communications path here do you mm -hmm. know what i mean that, that in order to get approvals to get this stuff released a this is what we need and b can we get it released and then third so, we, have, we have a logistics side of this go ahead right. jack. 
Roy, just, just to kind of, I would like to focus on helmets, vests, uh, jackets, that Gotcha. Because that's okay. easier. You gotta get that list to, yeah, they got to get that list together. We, 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 we had this a slide group, on that list. Yeah, right. I understand. But, but you've got 20 people on this screen, okay? And the question is, is who's good at what things? So in other words, the, the, I hear two, it, two groups of, of workloads here. One is the communications, which is communicating to the various police departments. And the other one's logistics. Is there any way that are worthwhile having a conversation about who would like to join one of those subgroups? I think at, at this point uh, where we have 19 participants um, and we have to organize some of the other districts, it may be more prudent at this point to A, if John and Jack could reach out to their connections, if it is at all possible, see how the easy way goes, right? First, mm -hmm. try the easy route. And if you don't get a lot of feedback, then start on the follow-up of, of having people call. Now, for example, I live in Sharon. I can call Canton, Stoughton, and all of these surrounding towns. So yes, Brenda, to your point, I completely agree. Um, you know, if 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 everyone in this room is willing to make five, six, seven calls, um, and then we can get some of the other districts as well. That that will be absolutely perfect. Um, as a follow up to the initial email, because as we all know, everyone ignores the emails right? Uh, you need the phone call as a follow-up to that to ring kind of that bell in the back of their mind. Oh, yeah, I saw something about this. Um, yes, ma'am. Um, I, I would recommend in, in terms of like a phone chain and all that stuff that, that the first thing we do is look at, you know, having the local Rotary, Rotary Club reach out because I know the police chief, Jack Collins, doesn't know the police chief in Newton. You know, it's a better, it's a better ask if it's the local... <laughs> person so that might be the first after after you, if you do a, like a you know with the the larger email and all that but then for the follow-up do it through the local rotary club I don't, I don't know if there's a club in stoughton for example maybe you it would be more appropriate to have someone call the president of the stone club hey we need someone to make this ask you know it, right. like the local touch seems to be more productive in my experience okay wonderful thank you uh, yep yep uh rich trainer yeah um I don't have a problem talking to probably half a dozen fire chiefs in my area. Um, they're going to ask me what kind of equipment you want. Now, you referred to a list. Can we get that list? Yes. Because that's going to be the follow-up question. And the next thing is, can we give it to you? Uh, and they'll have to figure out if they can give it to us or not. But I'm wondering what's on that list. Is so, it turnout? Gear? Is it I'll appliances? Is it hose? Is it... No, no, no. So on th that list is going to be your, you know, your, your uh, jackets, your pants, your boots, your gloves. They are literally just the key of region alone asked for a thousand jackets. And the reason being is because the firefighters are fighting so many fires that they are literally running through their equipment on a weekly basis. So they're asking for all of this. Now, mind you, on that list that Ukraine had sent over, there was also ambulances and fire trucks. Now, I am sorry, but I am not finding an airplane big enough to hold ambulances and fire trucks. It's just not going to happen, right? You're better off buying that in Poland, and I cannot do that. Um, so I think we need to focus on what we can do, right? Right. And these are the things that they can, I think, more or less, and we'll find out what time uh, provide. Uh, John, I think you wanted to say something. Oh, and there goes Jack. So I must have said something wrong. Just, uh, Lynn, just what I'll do tomorrow and whatever works best for everybody on this call, I can see us getting the Worcester County Sheriff or the Middlesex County Sheriff involved in this, and then we can store stuff at the prisons, which logistically works better. Because you got to remember the Middlesex prison is up north and the Worcester is in Worcester, but it gives, it also will alleviate some of our problem of getting stuff picked up because people will then take them to whatever, or I can set up both. But I mean, Roy, what do you think works better, works better Bill Ricca or Worcester? Probably Worcester because you, you, you've got more, it's a little bit more central into the, into the district in terms of physical okay. space. 
I'm more concerned about, as everybody's saying, we can call our local fire department, we can call, our, but unless we have the legal understanding as to how they can do all this, you know what I mean? We need to frame that frame that conversation. Go ahead, Jack. Jack will know. Let me, let me talk about that. Uh, we've, we've mentioned if it's going to be the fire chief donating on behalf of the city of town, there's a whole process you're going to go through. You have to declare it surplus and so on. The equipment you're talking about is probably no longer owned by the fire department. If you're talking about turnout gear that was purchased okay, uh, and is now no longer being used, it might very well be owned by individual firefighters. A lot of equipment, and especially in the police side, for example, they have a uniform allowance every year as fire department does, and they give the money is given to the firefighter or the police officer, and he or she will spend it, and then next year they'll get some more. So if there's leftover equipment or clothing or things like that, it might very well be belonging to the individual people who aren't, aren't constrained in terms of what they can do with it. A lot of times they're gonna just throw it away before, before now. But what you could do right now, even though I just sent notices out to each of the fire chief associations and they'll do their normal thing and they'll go contact everybody, you may find that the unions would wanna get behind this and they would get a lot of public relations out of that by contacting their members and saying, hey, look guys, you know, if you've got some extra stuff right now, let's bring it together. They'll get a lot of pictures in the paper and we're working with the Rotary Club. So it may very well be that uh, in this case here, the fire chief or the police chief is really constrained, but the individual unions are gonna have a lot more ability to do something. So uh, it, it, that's another area you can look at because they're not gonna have the same problems with going in front of the board of selectmen and getting something approved and sending brand new things, a new ballistic vest costs upwards of $1,000. They're good for five years in the United States. Well, they're good for a whole lot longer, but after five years, we've, we've decided we're gonna you know, get rid of them and give people new ones. Well, if, I've got a, if I'm a police officer and I have a five-year-old, six-year-old vest, I haven't thrown it away. It's still sitting in my closet. I'm not gonna wear it because the town just bought me a new one. But if I can send it over there because the union tells me to send it to Ukraine, then that's going to be worthwhile. So give the unions an opportunity to look good here in this situation here. You may very well find that they can produce a whole lot more for you. All right, guys, we have two minutes. Does anyone have any contacts with the union? All right, Peter Golden, you are muted. Thank you. Just uh, an obvious procedural process. Tomorrow morning, I'll put out calls to the police chief and the fire chief and discuss the substance of this meeting tonight. That's obvious, number one. Number two, I'll reach out to the union reps, particularly on the fire department. And number three, I'll get them involved in this process and try to spark their imagination. My sense is, like all of us, they'll rise to the occasion. And the uh, logistical work that you've done already uh, will facilitate it. And we should have some pretty efficient response, uh, particularly because this meeting tonight is so logically defined and we've, we're already in motion. So congratulations to all of us and let's get to work. Thank you. I love it. 49 seconds and you got the gist of it. That's wonderful. Brenda, hi. I think one of the first and very important things is, is to get our communication set. We need a flyer or something with the information that is necessary on it before we go off and, um, you know, that we're all telling the same story. And we have lots of connections and I could see a communications group, a, a logistics group and, you know, somebody making phone call group. Um, but I think that's really important is to get our message our needs and our ask, and and then uh, then we can all go running. Okay. Well, uh, what I'll do is, Roy, uh, were you able to take a screenshot of everyone that is here, yep. so that way we can maybe just put together a group now. Mind you, guys, I get like fifty rotary <laughs> emails a day nowadays. That's not counting all of the Ukraine uh, emails. So, with that said.